Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to do the 10,000 mile update on my 18 Crosstrek. But we're gonna start off first with about a minute and 15 seconds of video footage from the last 10,000 miles. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I've had a lot of fun over the last 15 months and 10,300 miles of making videos and um, just taking the car out and enjoying it and then also just daily driving it. It's been a great experience. So far I have about 66 videos in my Crosstrek video file. So if you guys are new around here, you can check those out. There'll be a link up top to the uh, all the Crosstrek videos. If you come away after watching those, or even before, if you have questions or comments, you can leave them below. You can also email me. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit like. So I'm gonna start off with just my general thoughts about the last 10,000 miles and my ownership experience so far. I bought the car October 5th of 2017 from Tucson Subaru here in town and my buddy Trent. And I had a 2014 Crosstrek previous to that. And I love that car. Um, I test drove the 18 and I was sold within the first five minutes and traded my 14 in right then and there. Um, in my opinion, the 18 Crosstrek is night and day better than the previous generation. Not to take anything away from those because like I said, I love my 14, but basically the 18 does everything better. It's quieter, it's more comfortable, there's more room, it gets better miles per gallon, and it actually feels a little bit quicker in my opinion. You can pass easier, you can go 75 to 85 on the freeway easier, you can go up climbs easier. Um, X mode is a fantastic addition. It's just, you know, the new audio system, though it's had its problems, is definitely night and day better than the 14 I had. So overall, it's just a better car. Um, I have done two services so far, and I have a Subaru maintenance warranty that's good for five years. So I basically, they cover everything, including shock struts, you name it. So I've had two oil changes and I'm actually due for my third, not based on mileage, but just based on six month intervals. So I'll be making that appointment soon. My miles per gallon average, I haven't kept a spreadsheet or anything, but just by knowledge of what it's been, probably averages around 26 to 27 calculated by math. Using the Subaru computer, it's 29 or 30. And as most of you know, you have to subtract about two or three miles per gallon to get an actual mileage or an actual MPG number. All my Subarus have been that way, including my current one and my wife's WRX, which is a 2017. So after 10,000 miles, what is my favorite thing about the Crosstrek? Um, it, it, at this point, it still has to be the keyless entry, the push button start, and the you know touch to open, touch to close. It's an option that I really didn't think I'd ever care that much about, but I absolutely love it. And the ability to set a pin code, leave your key fob in the car and go hiking, camping, swimming, whatever it is that you're doing. It's just a really nice option and I absolutely love that. I was actually trying to figure out something to tell you guys about the car that I don't really care for. And the only thing that I could come up with that's kind of bothersome on a regular basis is the fact that as soon as you start the car, you can not adjust the volume of the radio. It takes like three or four seconds. And I forget all the time to turn it down when I get out of the car. Sometimes I remember, um, it's not like I have it blasting, but it's just kind of frustrating that you can't adjust it. Beyond that, I really don't have any complaints about it. Um, I, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it gets 
relatively good mileage for what it is. I can go off road pretty much anywhere that I want to go. It's been reliable. I've have, I have no problems with the car. The two things that I have had to deal with over the last 10,000 miles that have been issues. Number one, if you've been around, you know, has been CarPlay. When I first got the car, it was very intermittent. And that was corrected with, for me by the second head unit update. And my understanding is there is another update out right now. I've got a couple of recall notices about it. So I need to do that when I do my next service. The other issue that I had was, and I'll link the video up here, was I, my um, sway bar bushing on my rear driver's side actually came loose. It came off the, the, it came detached. Basically the bolts came out and it was, the sway bar was basically banging against the car and you'll be able to hear that in the video if you watch. I took it to Subaru. They found that my, had, my rear trailing arm had a slight bend in it or a slight dent, I guess more, more than a bend. They attributed the sway bar bushing coming loose to the dent in my trailing arm and did not cover it under warranty. Um, I totally disagree with that and you can watch the video and find out why. I don't want to go back into it now, but um, I just don't see the connection between the trailing arm and the sway bar bushing coming out of the, coming detached from the car with perfect bolt holes and bolts able to be threaded back in with no issues. But check that out if you're interested. Other than those two things, I really have not had a single issue with this car. Everything has worked as it should. All right, so I want to take a quick moment to just do a, a review of the modifications I've done to the car. And I will try to link the videos below, or you can, again, check out the Crosstrek video playlist for the modifications to get more details about them. But probably my favorite thing I've done to the car is adding the method wheels and the BFG KO2 tires. It's just allowed me to feel a lot safer off-road and just given me more performance overall. Um, as you've seen, by, if you watch the videos, I've been in mud, water, snow, uh, rocks, and obviously driving on the road. And other than the noise, the extra noise from the all-terrain tires, um, it's been a fantastic modification and I've had zero problems with the, with the KO2s and I have no complaints about them. I think they're excellent. My second... Favorite modification I've done is the LP Adventure front bar and skid plate. And yes, you do lose about an inch and a half of ground clearance under the skid plate just by the way it mounts, but it has done the job that I wanted to do, and that is protect that front plastic and protect the underside of the car. Um, I have noticed more rubbing when I'm off-road with the skid plate. Obviously, it's about an inch and a half lower, so that's going to happen. And I'm just a little bit more careful how I pick my line. And I will remedy that eventually, either with a lift or with springs. I'm just not really sure yet what direction I want to go. As to the uh, front bar, I, have you noticed, I just added the two Hella lights up front. And I'm very satisfied for the, for the money, how they provide light. And I like the way they look. Just kind of a nice look. One of the things that's been on my car basically since the day I got it, and that is the crossbars and the two Yakima bike racks. I had both of those items on my 2014 as well as my 2011 STI. And my understanding is Subaru actually created some new crossbars for the 18s and above, but my, my crossbars from 2011 fit on my car with no issues and I've not had any problems with them getting loose or rattling or anything like that. And I put my bike up on top of the car probably two or three times a week. So all good to go. One of the other major things I did to the car was I installed a Kurt class three hitch and it's absolutely fantastic. I love it. It just makes the car a lot more versatile. I tow my trailer with the car. Um, I have my hitch basket and I also have a hitch mounted bike rack if I need to carry more than two bikes. So it kind of just opens up the opportunity to uh, use the car for a lot of different things. And I highly recommend getting a hitch. Probably don't need a class three, but I wanted the uh, two inch receiver and it wasn't that expensive. I think it was 150, $158. And it's just a fantastic addition to the car. One other thing that I did exterior wise, that's just, you know, are the emblem overlays, the little Arizona flag. And I, I really like them. I think they look cool. Adds a little bit of color to the outside of the vehicle. And I've been real happy with them and recently put some on my wife's WRX and those came out nice as well. One other thing I forgot to mention on the exterior was the Gorilla mud flaps. And those are just nice, uh, for a little more protection because the method wheels are a little wider. Interior-wise, have the Cup Holder Hero, which I did a video on, you can check out. 
And then I did the LED light in the rear hatch area, and that's the only LEDs I've done inside the car so far. Um, very bright and not expensive at all. You can find those on Amazon. And a very easy install if you're looking to add a little more light in the back. And the only other thing interior-wise that I have planned at this point is I, I have a um, speaker, like I think it's a um, Rockford Fosgate speaker that I had in my 14. It's kind of a self-contained slight amp and speaker in one, you know, they're about this big. And I, I want to put that in the 18 just for a little bit better sound. But other than that, I don't have anything planned for the interior. Exterior wise at this point, I'm still, like I mentioned, looking at the either springs or a lift. And I would love to get an exterior tire carrier attaching to your hitch, but they're pretty darn pricey, seven, 800 bucks if I remember right. Um, Hijack Secondary has one if you want to check that out. You can find his channel on the front of my page, but it's really nice, but very pricey. All right, guys. Well, I think that about covers it. I don't want this video to get too long. So hopefully this at least gives you some insight into the 10,000 miles and how the car is doing. I mean, really, it's been pretty much problem free as far as anything mechanical. Um, you get in it, you start it and you go. And it, it just really is a fantastic all around driver on this road and it really opens up doors off-road if you like to do camping or just exploring stuff stick around for more videos i'm going to have something new coming up in the next couple weeks i'm going to try to find a new spot to go check out for you guys and as always i sincerely appreciate you watching along questions comments you can either email me or leave it below we'll see you next time thanks for watching